We just have one more thing I wanted to touch on in regards to changing up High Elves and their culture. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. And we are still picking at High Elves and changing up that fantasy culture, and there is one last little thing I wanted to touch on, or at least place more emphasis on. But before we get exactly into that, if you're new here to the channel, then go on down there to hit that subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or, if you've already listed yourself on such a legendary roster of dashingly awesome adventurers such as that, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide to help us grow ever further. But now, let's go ahead and pick at this little issue sitting at the back of my mind. So, when it comes to High Elves and changing up their culture and everything surrounding that, there's one thing that I had touched on briefly, and that's the weaponry of the different cult, these different cultures, the Zhou Dynasty of China, and then the Inca, and then the Maya. And with the weaponry and the warfare, you can do a lot to really begin to switch things up for the Elves, and it actually is a direct reflection and informs and is informed by their culture. And so what's one of the key staple things about elves that just persists no matter what genre, no matter what setting or story you're looking at? Their archery, those reflexes, that keen eyesight, that unparalleled skill that allows them to pin a, a gnat to the wall by its wingtip and keep it alive. It's their archery, 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 their marksmanship and all of these things these amazing wonderful things and it's it's cool don't get me wrong it's a classic and it's a staple for a reason but that does kind of get repetitive and a bit samey and so we can switch this up to make the elves feel distinct fresh and new and with the Zhou dynasty there's china was such a big region that you can still have room for elves who are specialized and emphasize archery but you also have the different array of martial arts that are available to us. You have incredible spear fighting techniques, the different kinds of Guan Dao and uh, the Jian and the Jian Jian. I apologize if I'm butchering that. I expect that I probably am. But still, uh, Chinese swordsmanship, especially it's just the beautiful movements and uh, patterns and moves that they use to deflect and the weaponry that they use is absolutely uh, possible to be just these incredible works of art and this gives you a pretty broad range of uh, different avenues for changing up the elves and how they fight and function and same when we go over to the Inca and the Maya with the different spears that they had and then the uh, uh, the uh, those wooden uh, those sword-like wooden clubs that had the jagged pieces of obsidian lining them that essentially functioned as swords and then you have the atlatls and the darts that those would throw all these different unique and interesting weapons I mean they might have been made from wood and stone but that doesn't mean they were primitive it was a clever use of materials that were readily available to them and worked well and survived well in the environment that these people lived and operated in so definitely shows that um, adaptability and that adaptability to the environment in which they lived and thrived in is something that, uh, well, it just goes back around to informing the culture and then the culture and the environment both inform the warfare and the methods that they take to those there. And there's also something else that should be mentioned and that's how long elves live. I mean, depending on the story, you know, the setting and all of that, they're either immortal elves or they live a millennia or maybe a couple millennia. Either way, they have a lot of time on their hands. And so that time on their hands allows them to develop some pretty interesting techniques because one of the big problems with swordsmanship for people is, or for human people in this real world that we exist in, is that it's difficult to really develop. It's a difficult skill set. I mean, it's fun. It's really cool. And I love doing it. But two weapon fighting is probably kind of dumb. It, like from a functional standpoint, especially with fighting with two 
longer weapons of roughly e equal length and weight. That's not an easy skill to develop because however much time you devote to developing that skill in one hand, you have to devote as much, if not more, for your offhand. That's why you typically see the offhand with shields, bucklers, parrying daggers, or shorter parrying blocking weapons that just kind of end up more used for defense. Maybe the occasional bit of offense as uh, um, you tie up your opponent's weaponry with your own main weapon and slip in for a quick jab, perhaps. But mainly, most of your damage dealing is going to be done with the main hand. This doesn't have to be the case for elves, or at least not right off the bat. It can actually be used as a mark of, uh, as a functional mark of their progress and skill set as a warrior, because sword, buckler, sword and dagger, those are going to be basic, fairly standard things. It's going to be common amongst pretty much all the different fantasy races, species, all of those different creatures and cultures out there. That's going to be pretty typical, but. Because they have such a long time to live and to develop those skills and that put in that time to develop that skill set with both hands and get that muscle memory ingrained, you have a potentially very, very lethal fighter that's able to just go toe to toe and deal incredible amounts of damage to their opponents. That said, they're still probably going to be... In most instance, instances, it's probably still going to be more worthwhile to pick up a shield. But if they're wearing plate mail armor, just that full plate, well, that full plate's a significant amount of protection. You're essentially, you're near to an armored tank, so it may not be a bad idea to have two swords. But then again, context kind of determines whether or not you'd want to have a, a pole hammer, something to deal a significant amount of bludgeoning damage, or, you know, just keep one sword sheath to uh, go... Uh, um, two-handed on the blade and then use the pommel as a as a flail as a hammerhead it's said on and on and on it's i'm getting ahead of myself and getting lost in the details here but it's all these little things that you can use and crop all of this together and then we go over back to the maya and the inca and the way that uh especially believe it was the maya towards the end of their uh towards the end of their civilization once it was on a decline they really made an emphasis and usage of uh, their knowledge of the movement of celestial bodies and the constellations and to predict things like um like eclipses and the like and to go ah oh, this is how we know our gods are angry we need to appease them start the sacrifice now and perhaps they'll give back the sun uh, things along those lines or at least that's the theory but in either case, since this seemed like magic to so many people, or at least you could imagine how that would seem almost magical and mystical, well, why not start basing elven uh, magical practices to different lodges or um, themes and, uh, and the like, the different traditions that they have? Why not start basing that on these other cultures where they're concerned very much about the movement of these different celestial bodies, empowering different spells and the like, or how it see how when they cast this magic, it seemingly creates these different uh, constellations to appear around them in these little nimbuses and or orbs of light that swirl about. There are so many different things that you can do, and you just need to find that inspiration by looking at these different cultures and how they did things. It's an incredibly useful tool. I can't emphasize this enough to you, or at least it's a tool I've found to be incredibly useful and I want to try to pass that on to somebody else. But what do you think? Did you find all of this useful today? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Hit those like or dislike buttons and let me know in the comments down below and we can engage and have a, have a bit of a discussion about it. Certainly, I'd be happy to. And remember, if you're new here to the channel, then go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.